talking about Git and GitHub and some things that I've learned uh, along the way from using these technologies. Uh, and then if you want to like, uh, find my slides or um, go to my website, that's listed at the bottom of each slide. Um, so my name is Monica. I'm a full stack engineer at Meetup, and I'm also the organizer of the React Ladies community in New York City for women and non-binary uh, React developers. Um, so today I'm first going to start with talking about Git versus GitHub, as well as touching on um, some other topics. So first, what is Git? Um, so Git is an essential part of this talk. Um, it's also a distributed version control system. A lot of um, developers may be familiar with using Git um, to manage their um, version control. Um, and usually you can use it locally uh, to your computer. Um, so what do GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket have in common? So these are all uh, remote hosting places where you can store your uh, Git repositories. They are build collaborative um, they build collaborative tools on top of Git. Um, so a lot of my examples use GitHub because GitHub is the service that I use. Um, so first I'm going to talk about uh, the title of the talk, so time traveling and Git. So uh, there was a time when I accidentally discovered uh, that you can commit code into the future on GitHub. And this is a uh, feature, not a bug. Um, so how I discovered this is I was debugging an issue at work. Um, so we have a calendar in our product. Um, and for whatever reason, there was a bug that only popped up on certain dates. Um, so I was trying to reproduce it locally on my computer, um, which involved me um, changing the clock time on my computer so I could simulate, OK, what does this look like in the future? Um, so I checked out my branch. I changed the time on my computer, was able to replicate the issue locally. Um, and then by the time I pushed it up to GitHub, uh, it said that it was committed 11 days from now. Um, and so that's when I realized I always thought that GitHub was using like their server time, but they're actually honoring the time in Git. Um, so for Git, it's, um, you can pass in environment variables with the time, uh, or if you don't pass explicitly pass in um, like it shows on the screen, uh, it, uses, it defaults to your um, local computer time. Uh, for some things, GitHub will use their time, like if you open up PR. Um, so another mystery I was trying to figure out about GitHub was like, how does it detect languages of repositories? So if you've ever been to a GitHub repo, uh, there's a colorful bar that shows you the language breakdown. Um, and like, is this even accurate? Um, I had a lot of questions uh, that I wanted to figure out. Um, and so this is a picture of one repo that, these are both the same repo, but with drastically different classifications. Um, and I changed one line of code and this, the graph changed from like majority being classified as CSS to being half classified as Python and half classified as HTML. Um, so uh, how that happened? I, so I was working on a Python project um, and I had I copied some CSS and that changed the classification. Um, so I was trying to figure out why did that happen and I discovered how does GitHub um, detect languages. They use a library called the Linguist Library which is open source. Um, so you can d uh, look at the documentation afterwards. Um, but essentially, similar to how there's like a .git ignore, there's also a .git attributes file. Um, and within that, you can tell the linguist library uh, to ignore certain files. So this is the um, change that I made, was adding a line saying anything in the static folder should be ignored um, by linguist. Um, so speaking of other hidden files within uh, Git, if you go into any, like, or most Git repositories um, within the .git folder, there's a, hit, a hooks directory, um, and it has, like, all these different example scripts, um, which are hooks that you can um, use in your projects. Um, so what is a hook? You can think of a hook as if this, then that. Um, so if a certain trigger occurs, then an the action uh, will happen. Um, and so the triggers are different points within the um, Git lifecycle. So um, for example, pre-commit. So if you start making a um, commit before it actually occurs, that's um, considered um, a trigger. Um, and so Git hooks are essentially just executable scripts. Um, so some ways that you can, uh, some things that you can implement um, are you can warn when you're committing to master, ha make sure that you run prettier ESLint and Jest uh, before committing, or make sure you don't commit console.logs. But since these are scripts, you can essentially implement anything. 
Um, so here is an example of a pre-commit hook that I wrote in Bash, which is uh, basically saying that if you're trying to commit to um, the protected branch, which is master, it's going to print out a prompt uh, to the CLI and um, ask, is that what you intended to do? And if you click um, yes, or if, yeah, if you click um, yes, then it proceeds as normal. But if you click no, then I'll exit with a status code one in the um, commit will not go through. Um, so you can see that in this uh, screenshot. So whenever I um, try to commit to master, this would print out. Um, and then if you are interested in implementing hooks with JavaScript, there's a library called uh, Husky that allows you to add hooks to your package.json file. Um, so here is an example of adding a linting script. So every single time I try to um, commit, it uh, will lint my code. If that fails, then the commit will fail. If that doesn't fail, it works. Um, there are some limitations of, of Git hooks. Um, so they can easily be overridden, like you can force push. So there's definitely not like a very strict thing. It's like a nice to have, but not a way to enforce things. Uh, generally, hooks are not shared. Um, if you do have them in your package.json, then they'll be committed to um, version control. Um, and then these are some resources. So I'll share my um, slides on Twitter. Um, and thank you.